Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and today I'm going to do a video tutorial on creating drum machines in Reactor. Obviously there's a ton of different features that you could add to a drum machine, uh, so I'm going to start with something really simple today using as few modules as possible and next week we'll spruce it up a little bit. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we come out with a new reactor tutorial every week. All right, so let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is add an event table to our project, and we're gonna use this to hold our drum sequences. So let's set our table size in the properties here. And we want the X parameter to be the length of our drum sequence. Um, so I'm going to create something really simple to start out. I'm just going to create a 16-step sequence. And I'm going to use the Y parameter to control the number of drums that we can play at once with our drum machine. And you want that to also be equal to the number of voices in your instrument, which by default is going to be four. So I'm just going to keep it simple. We're just going to make a simple drum sequencer that has uh, four drums and 16 steps. So we have a lot of stuff we have to do to this event table to make it work the way we want. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is set it to have table draw mode on. and That'll allow you to draw your sequences in very quickly. But it also does this kind of annoying thing where if you draw past the end of the event table, uh, the events that you draw wrap around to the beginning, and you can turn this off by changing the clip wrap parameter to clip instead of wrap. It'll be wrap by default. All right, so currently this is displaying the events for one of our drums, and we can make it display all of our drums at once by going to the view tab in the properties and selecting the multi-line view. Uh, from the, the graph menu. All right, so this is getting a little better. Still a little complicated to see what's going on though. And I think turning on the grid helps a lot. So I'm gonna turn on the grid for the X and the Y. And I'm gonna set up the X grid so that it um, emphasizes the every second and fourth and eighth line kind of like, a, like the sequencer in Ableton or whatever. All right, so if this is a bar long and the top uh, row is a kick drum and the second row is a snare drum, you could program in a very simple, stupid loop like this. I'm going to turn off a bunch of parts of the view here that I don't like, such as the scroll bars and the label. And just briefly, I'd like to mention there's a better view to use here, the 2D color view, which kind of looks great. I mean, it looks like a kind of like the Ableton sequencer in a way, but unfortunately you can't draw new values in using this mode. I don't know why. I think it's probably a bug, honestly. So unfortunately, in order to draw new lines in, we're kind of stuck with this uglier multi-line view, but it does work, So, and it's very easy to set up, so it's not so bad. All right, so now let's set up a way to read from our event table so we can send some events to trigger drum sounds. So I'm gonna use the song position module for this, and it's gonna give us a position in 96th notes, which is gonna give us um, how many 96th notes have passed since the beginning of the song. So for every bar, we're gonna get 96 notes out of this, or 96 events which is really a lot more than we need. So I'm gonna take it and we're gonna use a modulo by six. All right, so a lot of people get confused by the modulo operation and it's, it's really very simple. This is basically like the way you used to do division when you were a little kid, um, where you know they'd say something like, what's 20 divided by six? And the answer is three with a remainder of two. So the top output here is going to give us the answer 3, and the bottom output, the mod output, is going to give the remainder, remainder of 2. So 
When we modulo by 6, basically what we're doing is dividing by 6 and then rounding down um, when we take the div out the div output from that modulo uh, that module. And when we divide 96 by 6, we get 16. So this will give us a value. Uh, it's going to go up by 16 for every bar. Now I'm going to use a second modulo device. And this time we're going to use the mod output. So we're going to take this value that's counting up by 16. And we're going to mod it by 16. Um, and then we're going to end up with a value between 0 and 15, um, which is going to be the remainder of that division. And we can use this as the read x input for our event table. So we're always going to be reading out a value between 0 and 15 here. All right, so in this next part, we're going to be using voices to do something a little strange. We have our four rows of data, and we have an instrument with four voices. And for each voice, we can read out one piece of data. So we want to use each of our four voices to read out one of our rows. And we're going to use the RY input to the event table to do this. So for the first voice, we're going to read out uh, the y index of 0. And for the second voice, we're going to read out the y index of 1, etc. So we need to create a signal that's going to give us a constant value where um, each voice is being read from in the ry input. And to do this, we can use the V output of the voice in info module. So it's going to give us a signal where the first voice has a value of 1 and the second val voice has a value of 2, etc. So we're just going to subtract 1 from those values because we want our RY input to range from 0 to 3. So instead of from 1 to 4, we're just going to subtract 1. And that's going to supply our RY value. So now the output at our event table is going to be a signal with four voices, where the first voice is our kick drum row, our second voice is our snare drum row, and etc. And we can use that information to read from a sampler module to play back some drum samples. So let's open up the sample map editor at the top of the screen here and add some samples to the sample map. And um, just going to add a kick drum first, and a snare drum, and then we can add a couple hats. And you'll notice that the root values are being loaded in, uh, starting at 0 and going up by 1 for each new sample. And the root value is the number that our pitch has to be equal to to trigger that given sample. So we're having roots from 0 to 3. And we can actually use this signal that we created to read out from our event table to also supply the pitch of our sampler. So this is going to say, you know, on the first voice, play back the kick drum sample. On the second voice, play back the snare. And on the third and fourth voices, play back the two hi-hat rows. So when we use these values from the event table to supply the trigger input for our sampler, um, the events for the kick drum are going to be on voice one, where we're saying that we're going to be playing. We've already told the sampler we're going to be playing back the kick drum sample. So this is a very easy way to play back our samples. And we can just set the uh, amplitude of all the samples to 1, and they'll, go, they'll stop playing as soon as they're done playing because we haven't set them to loop. And we can run that directly into the output. And there's one small error that's going to happen when we hit play here, but I've left it in for a reason. So um, let's just... Check it out. All 
All right, so it sounds like we're triggering each of these samples like a bunch of times really quickly, and that's because we actually are. Um, and you can test that by reading out the output of this modulo here into an event watcher. And what's happening is that, you know, instinctively it kind of feels like, you know, since the value of the event hasn't changed, that maybe the event actually won't get sent. But that's just not the way things work. And you'll see, looking at the uh, event watcher here, that we're getting six events for every value. So we're reading out each event in this table six times, which is kind of causing this glitched out drum effect. So to fix this, um, we can use a simple event processing module called a step filter. And so what the step filter is going to do uh, we're going to leave the tolerance at zero, and it's going to block out any event that is the same as the previously received event. So if the event doesn't change, then it doesn't get sent. All right, so you can see now that the event table is only giving us one value for each new number instead of six. So we can delete that. And next week, I'll show how we can expand this in a lot of different ways. Event tables don't save snapshots, for example. So I'll show you a way that we can kind of get around that restriction and how we can change the length of our sequences and so on and so forth. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please check out our website, reactortutorials.com, and I'll be back with an extension to this one next week.